Well, I guess today's video, guys, we're going to study kanji. Because, you know, kanji is lots of fun and everybody loves kanji. So this is Kazu, number, figure, count. Wrote it a hundred times. Aru, to exist, to have, to possess. Yeah, I gotta remember that one. Hmm. Oh, what's that, Colette? You don't want to study kanji? Yeah, but kanji is important. Okay, screw kanji. Forget kanji today. Although, by the way, guys, this is Aruku. And wrote it 100 times. Just because I'm obsessed with kanji. Yeah. But hey, we're going to listen to Colette's advice today. Because she's apparently a lot smarter than me. And we're going to play Tales of Symphonia. Da -da -da -dun, da -da -da -dun. The legendary Tales of Symphonia. Which, uh, I'm not sure why it's so famous. I mean, it's a pretty good game in the Tale series, but uh, I wouldn't consider it the best. But, uh, hey, let's have a look. So, let's see. Here's the manual. There's the disc. And, of course, once again, I'm playing uh, the original. And I'll explain right quick why I do that on my channel is because... The English translated and imported versions are often uh, censored and for me the censorship is unacceptable. So I'll show you I'll show you why and explain the you know differences real quick. Uh, if you don't want to hear it you can just skip to the beginning of the game. I'll um I'll put a little tag in the video so that you can skip. But uh have a quick look here at the manual. And um yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool story, um, you know, based on the world of Tales of Symphonia as well. So Symphonia, I mean, uh, Fantasia, sorry, bleh. Um, you know, Symphonia and Fantasia are, you know, somewhat linked. Both are great. But um, there are three things, three reasons why I'm going to do this game. And uh, number one is that the uh, skits are all uh, put in. Now, uh, you know, the skits are a very important part of Tales games. Um, you know, they kind of tell the story and the whole Tales series is really unique in that it has these uh, funny, you know, sometimes serious, sometimes funny skits and it's all about character development and it's very important and um, yeah, when these are imported, the, the importers are too lazy to actually translate the skits. But the skits are actually fully voiced. And to me, that's really important because you get to hear the characters, you know, emotions. And, you know, their happiness, their tears, um, their struggle, their shock. And um, these skits are really important for storytelling. You know, there's humor. Um, you know, there's sadness and, you know, there's all kinds of things, but having those unvoiced, uh, you don't get those emotions. And so, yeah, the people that, you know, bring this to the States or other countries, they're just too lazy. They get some voice actors, but they don't actually act the uh, skits. You know, Tales of Eternia comes to mind, you know, they're all silent. They're just, uh, you know, they just translate the text at the bottom of the screen instead, and it's completely silent. Same with the GameCube version of this game. It's completely silent. Only, you know, key scenes are actually voiced, um, you know, because they're cheapskates and they don't want to waste money. Um, but I think that's really important. And so I'm showing this to show that all the skits are fully voiced, and I'll show as many of them as I can. Uh, the second complaint that I have is that the uh, introduction song is stripped. 
Now, uh, the intro to all the Tales games have beautiful J-pop music, and a lot of those songs have been choreographed to match the opening animation of these games. And um, when you strip that out, it's just, you know, weird. It also loses its kind of, you know, exotic feel to it when, you know, it comes on. When I first played Tales games, I couldn't understand any Japanese, but I thought the opening song was awesome. I mean, it was just epic. I couldn't understand a word of it, but it was epic. So, of course, in this playthrough, we will have the original song from Tales of Symphonia, which is what the intro is supposed to be. Uh, Eternia comes to mind as one of the worst. Not only was the song completely stripped, but um, it was replaced by some stupid stock, you know, cheesy sound effects with some other cheesy, you know, tune that somebody had, you know, accidentally typed up on their computer or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's my second complaint. And, of course, in this one, we will not have the song stripped. It will be there in all its beautiful glory. And I think it's a real insult to the uh, artist, you know, who wrote the song. Uh, many of the artists, the J-pop artists that wrote the songs for the Tales series, they wrote it specifically for the game. And yeah, so it's an insult to strip those. Those should never be removed. It's unacceptable. Um, these days, it's kind of amazing. Uh, Tales of Vesperia, for example, uh, you know, the original artist actually does her Japanese version and an English version of the opening for foreign audiences. And that's awesome because the same artist is doing both. That's really the way it should be done. But it wasn't done in this, so that's unfortunate. And uh, the final thing... Boy, this... Uh, this is kind of a boring manual. I don't know. Usually I like to show off the Japanese manuals because they might be, you know, kind of different or look interesting, you know, compared to the uh, American version, but this one's kind of boring. I don't know. But the last thing that's my uh, pet peeve, of course, in uh, most video games that are imported is the renaming. And Tales of Symphonia has some unacceptable renaming. Which we will, which we will address now. So here we go. This is the Japanese, uh, you know, uh, manual here, and we have Lloyd. Lloyd Irving is his name. Everybody knows he is the famous great hero. Here we have uh, Colette, the lovely Colette Brunel, who we see right over here. She's our magical heroine who, uh, yeah, needs saving a little too much. And uh, over here we have Genius. Now, I'm not sure why Genius was renamed. I mean, I guess it could be because Genius is just a word and so it might sound weird, but if he was renamed to Genius or you know, what is he, a genus species, or Genesis, or Guinness? You know, what is he, in the Guinness Book of World Records? I don't know. But his name is Genius. Alright, everybody? His name is Genius, not Guinness or Genus. His name is Genius. I mean, sorry, that's just his real name. It's his true name. Also, a refill. I'm not sure why her she was renamed to Rain. But, uh, yeah, her name is Refill. Refill Sage. Yeah, I guess Refill does sound like, you know, odd like a name, but, I mean, you know, name changing is unacceptable to me. So, uh, her name is Refill. So, these are, you know, the two main culprits, you know, Genius and Refill. And we also have Kratos, of course, which was the same, and Sheena, our lovely ninja, and, uh, yeah are uh, Zealous, Zealous Wilder, Womanizer. And unfortunately on this uh, manual we don't have it, but uh, my favorite character in the game is uh, Presia. And for some reason her name was mistranslated, well, 
mispronounced, uh, I guess, in the English version. Um, you'll hear it lots of times in this video. You know, her name is Presia, and you'll hear Genius, of course, say her name a lot because Genius has kind of a thing for her. You know, him and his, you know, kendama. He just can't uh, keep from getting excited with his kendama when he sees Presia. But her name is Presia, not Presia, which I've heard people say, and then I watched the English version and the characters pronounced it as Presia, but that's incorrect. Her name is Presia, which is very cute. So, yeah, there's that, Tales of Symphonia. Um, I'm not sure about the English version of the PlayStation 2, but um, I did want to mention right quick before we start, there are you know, new elemental variations in the PlayStation 2 version, you know, like uh, Shinjinken. You know, if you add a lightning elemental, it becomes Shinraiken for Lloyd. And there are new unison attacks in this game. And I'll try to show them off. Uh, once again, I don't know about the uh, English PlayStation 2 version, if they added those new unison attacks. Um, Regal, Regal had no unison attacks in the GameCube version, and he actually has some now. And there are also some new hidden uh, ogies that are in this game, and I'll try to show those uh, ogies as well. As well as, you know, whatever uh, new skills that are, you know, not available in the other one. And that's right, these are sword skills, skills, ogies, jutsu waza. They are not uh, mystic artes. Because artes is not even a word. But hey, shall we get started, guys? Genius? Colette? Shall we do this? Arr, yeah, let's do it! Here we go, guys. Tales of Symphonia. This is the way it was meant to be played. Hey, guys, I'm playing this on the PlayStation 2. So, yeah, I tried my best with the cropping, but, you know, I don't want to cut off too much of it. So there is going to be a bit of, you know, black on the left and the right as usual. Um, you know, sorry about that. It's not on the PC or anything where I can, you know, do it super high res. It's just on the regular Japanese PS2. So I hope you enjoy this game and... Um, you know, all the original voice actors and actresses in their great performances. And uh, the opening song is uh, by Misono. It's a great tune. So let's get into it. Hope you enjoy.
Oh yeah. Now that is the way an opening should be. So, uh, unlike um, some of my other playthroughs, uh, you know, this game has English versions and there's hundreds of playthroughs of this game. And so, I'm gonna do a lot of cutting. You know, mostly just some of the, you know, extra scenes with uh, characters chatting, but there's not actually any sound. But I'll probably, you know, I'll put in the main scenes so that you can hear, you know, their voice acting and um, I'll you know do the usual a couple battles in each area and then I'll cut the rest of the battles so you don't have to watch all the battles and I'll kind of do it as a playthrough for those that maybe you're playing for the first time but if you are you're probably playing the English version but anyway let's go ahead and check out this great game and there's the mana tree かつて世界の中心にマナを生む大樹があったしかし争いで木は枯れ代わりに勇者の命がマナになったそれを嘆いた女神は天へ消えたこの時女神は天使を遣わした私が眠れば世界は滅ぶ私を目覚めさせよ天使は巫女を生み巫女は天へ続く塔を目指すこれが世界再生の始まりである So uh, that was Kurato's voice there in the opening. Lloyd Irving. Wake up, Lloyd Irving. Dude, he's not even holding those buckets. They're Lloyd. like, they're just like sitting there on the ground, and he's sleeping. Child abuse. <laughs> Oh, refill sensei. Is the class already finished? So, genius, please answer this question. Since Lloyd obviously wasn't listening. Man, this game um, has child abuse. I'm surprised that Tales of Rebirth with racism was unacceptable, but this game with, you know, like, child abuse is actually acceptable. And no, that's not what they're saying in the text. I'm probably gonna, you know, translate less this game than I have my other games, uh, because... Pretty much everybody knows the dialogue in this game. It's one of the most famous ones. But I did want you to hear the original voices. But I'll be doing a lot less translation since uh, people you already know the story really. デザイアンを封印する旅のことです。女神マーテルの試練をこなすと、世界を守る精霊が復活し、マナも復活します。そう、さすがはミコね。現在の食料不足で苦しみが増えています。And Colette, she is called the uh, Miko, and she has such a cute voice. これはデザイアンが人間牧場で。
So they're kind of just, you know, explaining the game right now, the, the story that the Miko is going to go on a journey to、uh, regenerate the world, restore peace, harmony. You know what? I think I'm going to put a child abuse counter in this series. Unless, of course, it was censored from the English version. I'm curious. Yeah, guys,、uh, in the comments, let me know、uh, if there's anything different between this one and the、uh, English release. You know, maybe things on the wall or. You know, outfits, things that are done. I know that sometimes there's censorship. So、uh, I'm curious, I'm always curious to know the differences. You know, I mentioned a few in the, in the introduction to this, but、um, yeah, sometimes there's you know, other kinds of censorship like clothing、uh, changes or you know, maybe something inappropriate on the wall, like a poster or something that's changed. A lot of times, the Japanese posters on the walls are just left as is. And, you know, English speakers that play the game are like, yo, what is that? What's going on? Because they're too lazy to, you know, actually change the game graphics, you know, change all the written stuff on the signs, perhaps, that are on the walls or whatever. Looks like somebody was flipping somebody off as they ran through the wall there. In the original, I thought that that was Lloyd that had crashed through that wall. See,、uh, hearing the voices you know, with the skits makes a really big difference. It makes the skits really come alive, and so that's what I want to show you guys. Are those grave? There are gravestones stuck in the flowers by the school. Now that's disturbing. This is an RPG. And we're gonna play it old style. <laughs> Colette has such a cute voice. And I don't know about you guys, but Majin Ken just sounds so much cooler than you know, Magic Sword. I don't know which sounds corny and cheesy. Ah, Koretto, Seiki no Naka te do not in da. Okura wa Naka ni haita koto nai kara, nanda ka doki doki suru yo. Oh, to ne, chotto kraku te. お日様の光はあまり入ってなくってなんか僕のイメージとは違うのかもでもね私も奥の方には行ったことないのうーん早く入ってみてえなロイド最初はいつもやる気満々だよね See it makes a difference you know with the animated you know panels there kind of showing You know what the characters are feeling and you know, doing as they talk. Much more dynamic. It's too bad that they you know, don't bother to translate those. Even all the way back to Tales of Fantasia, you know, those were all completely voiced too. And that's such an old game, you know, that's PlayStation 1. Actually, Tales of Fantasia was originally. On the Super Famicom, the Super Nintendo. And even that one had、uh, all the skits voiced. I was always disturbed by all the blobs in this game chasing me around on the map screen. Couldn't they have done something better? Like, 
I don't know, a dog or a wolf thing? Why does it have to be Dragon Quest blobs? So that previous scene, there was light coming out of there. You know, out of this uh, temple or church, whatever you want to call it. And apparently the bad guys are attacking one ring where the Miko is. Who is right there. Run away, Colette. Yeah, just give it away. There is the Miko. What's so funny? So the main villain, as always, just sends his peons rather than attacking himself. Just kill him from a distance. And I think I'll cook a sandwich. Just because I know there's a boss coming up. Let's see, why don't you just send him out first? Oh, come on. I totally had the upper hand there. It's one of those fights you're supposed to lose, but I totally had the upper hand. My HP wasn't even half gone. I could have taken him out. You! <laughs> you told us to stand back, but now everybody's in the fight. Problem is, we're all gonna run out of TP. And not the toilet paper kind. I'm gonna have to run to Walmart for more TP. <laughs> Kratos goes flying. That was a great hit. I'll tell everybody now, I'm not a fan of Kratos, really. I know some people like him, but I'm not a fan. Come on, just fall down. There we go. Come on, that's all the grade I got for that? I thought that was a decent performance, to be honest. 
whatever. Masaka Kisamaga Rauri to Anna. Is she the Taisu? Run away. Sugoi. Mecha mecha tsuyo, Anoji san. That guy is really strong. So that, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Bujika. Bujino Yodana. Everybody safe? Of course, a lot of this is, you know, tutorial. He's got an X sphere on his arm, which is one of the elements of this game. X sphere is, you know, a special emerald or, or diamond or crystal, whatever you want to call it, that gives people their special abilities. Of course, Lloyd has an X sphere also. There were guards here, but the there's this race called the Desions. I don't know what they desire, but the Desions came and attacked, and so all the guards are gone. So this guy is gonna go with us. He's Kratos, a warrior. And he'll, he'll help uh, escort the Miko for money. See, he's already kind of a jerk. Just for money, he's going to escort. How dare you! I'm not going to stay here. I got two swords. You've only got one. So Colette's talking for us. She wants Lloyd to go with us. She feels more confident with Lloyd. Aww. So cute. Genius. Genius. You too. That's right. Genius too. We need those fireballs. Oh, she's so sweet. Okay, so once again, you know, I'll show a couple fights in each uh, dungeon or area, and then I'll cut out everything else. And uh, I am going to cut out a lot of the useless dialogue. But once again, I'll try to show as many extra things as possible that maybe weren't in the original, or they weren't in the English release. I'll probably be using Lloyd. Hey, minus grade for that? That wasn't that bad of a performance, was it? Um, I'll be using Lloyd for most of the time, but, um, you know, when I get Presia, I'll probably be doing all her because she's awesome. I'll try to showcase the other characters. Uh, most of the characters in this game are fun to play as, so it's good to swap them out instead of just, you know, using Lloyd. So in this mini dungeon, our first objective is the Sorcerer Ring, which is over there on the stand. 
But Colette is interested in this big rock thing. So, time to rescue Colette again. Yeah, that was a bad performance. That was a minus grade, to be sure. Sorry guys, excuse my bad performance! Ah ha ha ha, there's Colette with one of her uh, quirks. She always trips. And whenever she trips, usually something good happens, apparently. And another rock guy appears. So we have to kill these rock guys, turn them into blocks, and use the blocks to build our way you know, to the sorcerer ring by dropping them through these holes, blah blah blah, the basic puzzle. But uh, I will be cutting out a lot of stuff, guys, so you don't have to watch it and, you know, it won't be real annoying. But I think I'll end here on the first save point as we start our journey in Tales of Symphonia. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the series. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments, you know, what the differences are and, uh, you know, if you've played this version, some of the things you liked better or worse or, you know, what you prefer in the imported version. You know, I really want to know. I'm curious because this is really the only version I play. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching and hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Johnny.